Hello and welcome to the TR Business Video Channel. I'm here with Jeffrey Davis, who is the Merchandising Director for Beauty for Lotte Duty Free. Yes. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you so much for joining us today and spending some time talking to us about right. your, uh, your role and, and, and the uh, number two global operator, Duty Free and Travel Retail. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, so, starting off with your position in second place in the TR Business Top 10 Operators <laughs> ranking, I know that you may have uh, a, a dispute over that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, tell us tell us what you may may uh, disagree with that. Well, our, our, our goal has always been to be number one um, in the next two years. So our goal by 2021 is to be number one. However, we know that there's a lot of great operators out like Dufree being number one today. So we don't take any of our laurels for rest. We know there's going to be a lot of people fighting for number one. And also, in the Korean market, there's other operators that are also mm. moving up the ranks very quickly, and including China Duty Free. Mm. So we'll be on our checking them out, watching them, and seeing what they're doing too. Mm -hmm. But our goal and our plan is to be number one as far as duty free mm -hmm. in 2021. Mm -hmm. And can you outline, in, in terms of your role specifically, yeah. some of the strategies behind that uh, great ambition? Uh, well, there's, there's a few things, of course mergers and acquisitions. So last year we bought JRs and um, that was a piece of it. So we will continue to look for mergers in the, in the mm -hmm. industry, seeing what opportunities are out there. Mm -hmm. um, and the big thing is many of our stores were expanding our stores that we have today inside Korea, but also in Vietnam. So Vietnam is one of our fastest growing markets. We'll open three or four new stores in that location in the next few years. Mm -hmm. um, and also in Oceania, we're going to be pushing that as far as new stores, new locations, mm -hmm. and of course, with bids of other airports mm -hmm. um, that are coming up very quickly. Any that you'd like to specify? Um, everyone knows <laughs> that they do, well, they, there's quite a few that are coming up. So mm -hmm. in the next couple of years, there's a few in Oceania and Sydney and, and mm -hmm. some other ones that are we're looking at. Of course, and, and that's obviously the e-commerce is, is involved in that as well. E-commerce is by far the fastest growing business for us uh, because we have the downtown store. Mm -hmm. um, Definitely our shoppers, first thing they do is on their mobile, they check us out, see what brands we have, they see what um, promotions we have, and, and then they'll always go into our store to see the stores and see the brands firsthand, mm -hmm. but they end up purchasing online. Mm -hmm. So they pick it up at the airport. So we have a huge growth from, you know, from 25%, we're going up to 30%, mm -hmm. 35%. So it is a force to be reckoned with and to be watched very closely. Of course. Yeah. And and carefully not to be mismanaged either. You know, going, uh, you don't want to run before you can walk is, is also important. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's very yeah, close. Uh, as I, as you alluded to, there are a few tenders coming up, and obviously one that is being talked about uh, a lot at the moment is the is, is one at Inchian and, and Changi. Yeah. Uh, considering the infamously high rents in those locations that have been mentioned on more than one occasion from uh, the incumbents. How important is it to win business in these two Asian hubs? Um, they're important. I, mean, I think it's, it's important that we ex extend our reach out of uh, Korea and to some other markets. And our bid is in for Changi, and we're hopeful. I think we put a really good bid in for the, for the location, and I think they're, we're surprised at what we had to offer. So I think it could be good. Mm -hmm. but. We never know, mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're hopeful, and of course confident. I don't know. I, uh, we <laughs> would always confident. hope that we win something that big mm -hmm. and that strategic and that important for a store, and mm -hmm. and hopefully um, we can be in a bigger market for for the liquor. Mm -hmm. And then Incheon is we're still waiting for the RPF, so mm -hmm. it has not come out yet. Mm -hmm. So we're. Thank you for the uh, for the update. <laughs> uh, more on to what you, what you love to do is yeah. uh, you know uh, Lotte and I have to say Schiller. You know they, they, you both like to say that you're at the forefront of uh, experiential retail yeah. and innovation and digitalization. Yeah. Um, and and you're more about elevating the customer experience you know, over and above the transaction. It's not about the transaction really at all. It's only a small part right, right. of the shopping experience. Yeah. Um, and and obviously with your stiff competition from from rivals in in the home market. It, how are you pushing the boundaries even further than them? The That piece of the business is, I think, the most important part of the business mm -hmm. because everyone can sell duty-free products in every location. It could be an airport, a downtown store. But that point of differentiation is mm -hmm. going to be the difference between a winner and a, and a loser. So for us, we have so many different ways of um, making our store really disruptive mm -hmm. um, from our lounge that we do our events in. We do these VIP events for our truly VIP customers and our KOLs and our celebrities. 
So that's a point of difference. There's a reason to come to Korea, a reason to come to Lotte, is because of this piece. Mm -hmm. No one else can do that in the world. And I think everyone needs a reason for them to change their route or decide that I have to go to Korea because there's something really special going on in Korea. And I think we do it best in class. We are the best in class. And, and it's not just Lotte, it's the brands really have signed up and done some extraordinary things with us. Mm -hmm. And we're super happy with the collaborations that we've done with a lot of the L'Oreal group, a lot of groups, and even some SK, SK2 and Shiseido groups. So we've been doing quite an amazing job this year mm -hmm. with the events. But perhaps relating to some of uh, the individual cases, um, yeah. I'm interested to know this, the kind of pitfalls when it comes to these uh, activations. Uh, again, you've said you've been very successful in, in, in a lot of them, but yeah. there must have been lessons that you have learned from <laughs> <laughs> implementing a lot of these, you know, staging a lot of these uh, very ambitious events. And I'm just interested to know if you can give any well, advice to other there's retailers. There's not really pitfalls. It, to be honest, there's, there's learning from every single, every single time we do it, we do it better. Mm -hmm. So it depends on what we're looking for. Are we looking for impressions or are mm -hmm. we looking for sales? Mm -hmm. Some of the brands really just want impressions. They, wanted, they want customers to see what the brand represents. Right. Some brands just want sales. So depending on the brief, we change the, the, the direction of the eventing according mm -hmm. to the brief. Um, for example, when we did Wise Hotel, it was all about impressions. It was 230 million impressions. 230 million people in Asia saw this event. Mm -hmm. That's pretty impressive. But sales were just normal. Mm -hmm. So we just did another event recently with Lancome, and mm -hmm. it, was, it was a prestige absolute event. Mm -hmm. It was just done last week, and it was really private. It was for the VVIPs. We had celebrities there. We had um, 17 KOLs flown in from China. Mm -hmm. And it was so special that they went back and told their friends. And it became one of the biggest um, talked about events mm -hmm. at Lotte. And on top of that, it was an absolute event. So it was actually sales came in. So we had one customer and her friend bought $7,000 worth absolute just because of the, the atmosphere and the That's how she felt. It was it was really, truly what retailing and travel retail should be. It's, mm -hmm. it's unusual. It's a downtown business, but in a travel retail environment. It was really extraordinarily done. Just two customers bought seven. Two customers. Mm -hmm. But they're, they're kits. They're the expensive absolute line. So mm -hmm. in the kit, there's 12 pieces. So it, it, it really was exactly what they wanted. It's exactly what we wanted. Mm -hmm. We want to not just sell units. We want to sell experiences and... and get the customer to always come back and talk about the brands. Mm -hmm. So that would be obviously a, a fantastic example yeah. of, of, of when it, it goes right. Yeah. Um, uh, you, we've talked about uh, the online sales and, and how important they've become to Lotto. Yeah. Um, what impact though does that have on the bricks and mortar stores? What, what are the future for the bricks and mortar stores? Um, that's where we're, we're currently evaluating that. To be honest, we're, we're doing a lot of different campaigns. So mm -hmm. today, You'll see we do something called uh, let's have let's do something fun, mm -hmm. which is LDF, which is Lotte Duty Free. Mm -hmm. um, everything's an acronym. So Lotte Duty Free, the Yum campaign really means um, about Yum. It's 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 food. It's satisfying. So mm -hmm. we want to satisfy our customers. So in store, mm -hmm. we're having more eventing because we know the customer is going to buy online. We know she can just purchase it and pick it up at the airport. So the in-store environment has to be something really fun and exciting. Mm -hmm. So we do a lot of also events in-store. Um, currently, we're doing an Estee Lauder event, and it was all about um, skincare consultations. And it wasn't just Estee Lauder, but it was their whole portfolio of skincare brands. Mm -hmm. And it was done in such a fun and unique way with um, gifts and a little uh, candy, um, like a gumball machine. Mm -hmm. And they really surprised the customer for the, the group. So mm. you always had to have a little bit of fun in the store mm. on top of um, the, the, the retail experience. So we're, we're challenging how we do things in store. Mm -hmm. Even though we know that more stores, or more sales will go online, mm -hmm. there's no doubt it's going to keep going and get bigger and bigger and bigger. So the in store experience just has to be fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, indeed. And it's interesting you touched on skincare, premium yeah. skincare yeah. being fun, which we you wouldn't think, right? Perhaps not. And again, I, I guess that's uh, another way that you're seeing the beauty industry adapt it's and change. Evolving. It's always evolving. It has mm -hmm. to evolve. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's different skincare, don't get me wrong. There is the luxury skincare, like the Sicilies and La Paris or mm -hmm. Absolute. And then there's the everyday skincare brands, which 
are accessible that mm -hmm. everyone can use, like a Kiehl's. I mean, Kiehl's is young. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an event coming up next month with Kiehl's, and a celebrity comes in. It's the I Love Korea campaign, so mm -hmm. we'll do a big event in World Tower, and uh, everyone will show up for this to see the celebrity, and it's, it is fun. Skincare mm -hmm. can be fun. You just mm -hmm. have to understand the brand's DNA and, and understand your consumer. Mm -hmm. And in terms of beauty as a category, have you... Have you seen any uh, or observed any trends that you can talk about that you know the consumer is, is demanding or you're seeing a particular appeal for something at the moment you know we, we've talked before about sense, li yeah. li lipstick lines you know there being a whole lipstick wardrobes and yeah. that's and companies just focusing on that for their makeup line rather than doing you know the the full uh, face there's, yeah there's there's always trends that come and go so mm -hmm. I, I what I actually see in the industry I think is what's interesting to see is young brands like Fenty Beauty come in. Mm. So Fenty Beauty are disruptive brands, and disruptive brands are good for the industry because it makes the big, big brands, like mm -hmm. a YSL, Giorgio Armani, Tom Ford, think about how they're doing their business. So it mm -hmm. shouldn't just be about lip. Mm -hmm. It should be about how you enjoy the beauty category. Mm -hmm. And I think brands like that, or Charlotte Tiburi, or mm -hmm. even Huda Beauty, they're really challenging how we do beauty today and mm -hmm. we need that mm -hmm. because it will get stale it can get stale it can get boring mm -hmm. and it's a cyclical business so today it, it, you know the lipsticks are slowed down a little bit they're mm -hmm. still big but mm -hmm. they're still slowed down but mm -hmm. when a brand comes in like that and does social media mm -hmm. that you've never seen in your life mm -hmm. all the people talking about a brand that's great for the industry mm -hmm. and that will create this trend mm -hmm. so I think the makeup trend because of these young brands will continue mm -hmm. to grow and actually evolve even faster because they're a challenge to the big ones mm, definitely well that's great thank you so much for answering our questions today I have many many more but I know you have a very busy schedule <laughs> yeah, so you so. must run but uh, thank you again so much for spending time thank with you us. I, I, every year I, th I appreciate you inviting me over here well we love having you and thank you thank you thank you, thank you.